I S U P K. Hey, Salam, man. It's Priest Kevin Condoha with the I S U P K. And the Commander Johnny Hanna in California, man. It's like all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Subscribe to this channel, man. You want true salvation? You gotta learn from the priests and prophets of the I S U P K, man. Subscribe to that channel. Hit that button, man. And it's there with that. Salam. All I ever wanted was to be a gangster. Little did I know I was in danger. Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger Pray to him all the time, but I was just a stranger All I ever wanted was to be a gangster Little did I know I was in danger Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger Pray to him all the time, but I was just a stranger All I wanted was to be a gangster And shot call To be known with them niggas letting shots off Either that or the right hand to the top door Funny how we see vanity and not the lives lost Can't be focused on a life that's hopeless Out there pumping, not knowing the Lord will kill you for that hocus pocus Used to roll with niggas that cook dope with weaponry Same ones claim they love you, I had your life in jeopardy And I know my mother won't success for me But that G should take a girl straight to ecstasy So we are the Israelite school of universal practical knowledge started out of 1 West 125th Street out of Harlem, New York under Commanding General Yohanna, man. We are not affiliated with no other Israelite group, no Christian organization. And we say that all the time because no other group of people really gives a damn about the Lord's children. Really gives a damn about blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans, man. That's right. We follow after America and we don't want to give a damn about each other, man. You know who we can blame for that? Christianity, man. Christianity is the reason why we look at each other as the enemy. Christianity is the reason why we have no compassion for, for us, but we have compassion for the oppressor, man. Christianity is white supremacy. By now, should we know that after 400 years, our condition hasn't changed with us being in America? We've been going to church as a, as a people for 400 years, man. Yes, sir. Black people have always been known for going to church. Hispanics have always been known for filling up the Catholic Church, man. We have always been known for going to church, and what has it done to change our condition? It's done nothing, but guess what? It made it worse. Yes, sir. We are worse off now than we were in the 50s yes, because of the Christian church, yes, because of the Christian leaders, man. Yes, There's leaders that we look up to. Give me Isaiah 9 and 16. I love this precept right here, and I love to start off with it because what we need as black people it's not only unity, because we can get together all the time. Black people come together for a concert. Shoot, brothers get together, but they about to rob somebody. Like, yeah, yeah, you gonna meet up with me? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that. That's easy. We get together for anything wicked, but we can't get together under righteous leadership, man. Right. That's what we lack as a people. Not unity, we lack righteous leadership. Every time we get together after one of our brothers are killed, guess who comes out and have rallies? Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson. Yep. They come out there to pacify the people. That's right. You know what I'm saying? When we demand justice as a people, they come out there and say, listen, God loves everybody. You got to forgive. Turn the other cheek. Well, that's not the Bible, man. That's not what the Bible's about. We just read in Exodus 15 and 3, the Lord is a man of war, man. The Lord is a man of war. We can't even comprehend war, right? Because we've been slaves so long in America, man. That's right. War is justice, man. You can't have peace and equality without war. And forget equality, man. Equality is not even real. Equality does not exist. Right here on this corner, nobody is equal. You know how you know somebody's the shortest, the tallest, the darkest, the lightest, the smartest, the fastest. Equality does not exist. Our oppressor gave us equality, the illusion of equality, so that we don't seek supremacy. Imagine if we said, man, we don't want to be equal no more. Damn it, we want to be on top. Guess what? We will operate way differently. Yes, but Christianity, following after these preachers, man, yep, we right. want to be equal, and guess what? We are chasing a pipe dream. Yes, sir. We are chasing, it's like ch trying to swing at your shadow, man. You'll never get it, because equality doesn't exist. We fought these pastors, and they lead us to destruction, man. Yes, Tell them where you at. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 16. For the leaders of this people caused them to err. The Bible says, for the leaders of this people caused them to err, man. The so-called leaders of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, 
the people that are supposed to guide us and lead us and give us righteous counsel, like we brought out earlier, they're supposed to judge matters on our behalf, they cause us to err, man. What does it mean to err? To error, to make a mistake, to do wrong, man. They cause us to be wrong. Wrong according to who? Wrong according to the Most High, the God of the Bible. That same Bible that Christians claim to read. Christians love to say, yeah, we preach, the, we love God and we preach the Bible. Well, if you love God and preach the Bible, how about you do what it says? Yes, how about you open it up and read it for a damn change, Christians? Yes, but guess what? We follow after these Christian pastors and they cause us to err in the sight of God, man. They cause the Lord to be against us, man. That's why right now in America, we are killed by corrupt police officers and our, our babies are killed in, in a Planned Parenthood because guess what? We follow after people that tell us to love the people that kill us, man. Yes, sir. We follow after people that tell us to turn the other cheek. That's right. Just keep working. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Mr. White Man, you didn't even pull yourself up by your bootstraps. When you were oppressed, you became criminals. Yes, when the Chinese were oppressed, they became criminals. When every other race of people were oppressed, they became criminals. And they turn right back around and they oppress black people. And then we turn to what we might think and our ignorance is the best route. Yes, sir. And they demonize us. Yes, they put us on the six o'clock news as, as the biggest murderers and thieves. And, and you know what I'm saying, trying to slander our reputation as a people. Guess that's, what? That's, right. that's not our culture. Not. It's not our culture to be like that, man. That's the culture of America. Yes, sir. That's the culture of Christianity. Yes, sir. Because Christianity is white supremacy. Yes. And when we follow after these Christian leaders, we are destroyed. The Bible says it. Read it again. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that Salakit, and they that are led of them are destroyed. The leaders, the so-called leaders of our people, cause us to err in the sight of God, man. And when we do what they say, we are destroyed. Why do you think it's so easy for a black woman to go and kill her baby in the Planned Parenthood, man? Who is telling this black girl that she has to kill this baby because she doesn't have enough money, because she has a bright future, because you're special? God loves you. Turn around and you got a blessing. Yes, the preachers, man. Yes, These right. damn preachers are lying to our people. Yes, sir. They are leading us to destruction. Why do you think it's so easy for a black man to put a pistol in another black man's face? You know why? Because the preachers preach prosperity. Yeah. Money, money, money. That's right. And guess what? Us being in the, the poor, the oppression we in, we, we, we envy that. We envy our oppressor, man. And we go out and do whatever we can to live that lifestyle the preacher is living, man. Yes, sir. The preacher preaches to us lies and they get rich off our lives, man. Yes, sir. I know y'all probably didn't know this. The black, these black preachers that are, have made these mega churches, do you know they party with the, uh, the black politicians? Yes, sir. The black entertainers, the black politicians, and the, and the mega church preachers, they all run in the same circles. Yes, sir. If you do some research, you realize they go to the same parties. They do the same drugs. They got the same connect. I guarantee you, they got the same plug, man. Yes, sir. Because they all party together. You know why? Because they have one thing in common. Yes, sir. Getting rich yes, sir. off the ignorance of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man. Exactly. You know why? Because they have been taught to not care about the people, their own people. Yes, because that's what Christianity is, is white supremacy. White supremacy hates black people. Yes, sir. The KKK are Christians, man. Yes, the mafia are Christians. Yes, sir. Donald Trump. Make America Great Again is a Christian. Yes, sir. Donald Trump is a staunch Christian. You know what? We shouldn't even call the churches churches no more. Nope. We should call them Trump centers. You know why? Because that's what you're going to when you are a Christian. Yes, when you go to church, you are being influenced and, and brainwashed and programmed to believe in the same philosophy that America teaches, that Donald Trump shares, man. Exactly. Yes, to be a Christian, you are saying, I support Donald Trump and everything that he stands for. Guess what? Donald Trump hates blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yes, sir. It is utterly American to hate blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It is utterly Christian to hate blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yes, sir. We got to stop being Christians and come back to the Bible, man. Yes, sir. We got to stop following these Christian pastors because they are causing us to be destroyed, man. Read that again. They are letting them... And they that are let of them are destroyed. And we follow after these people and we are destroyed. We really think the pastor is telling us good things. No, sir. That's our problem, man. We've been in America, and we d hate to hear the truth, man. Yes, sir. Our people hate to hear the truth, especially this generation. Yes, sir. This generation right here is, 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 soft as, is soft as ever, man. You can't even tell a brother, you, know, you can't even critique the brother. 
he get offended. Guess what? That's us as a people. We are so easily offended that we don't like to hear the truth. Even if it benefits us. You know what I'm saying? Like, brother, pull your pants up. You might have to run from the police that's trying to kill you. Man, this is this a style. That's how it works. Listen, we so easily offended, man. Guess what? Give me, give me Jeremiah 10 and 2. We're going to get some more on this, man. This is not our culture. To hate each other is not our culture, man. We once had love for one another, man. Yes, sir. We followed these laws of the Bible, our culture, and we had respect and dignity, man. Yes, sir. The other nations looked at us in, in amazement. You know why? Because the laws of this Bible, which is real black culture, yes, sir. it is the epitome of being civilized. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all think because of white supremacy and Christianity that being white is being civilized. Yes, sir. Well, that's not the case, man. Nope. They are the complete opposite of being civilized, man. Yes, sir. You see how they treat us? Yep. They have more love. The brother just brought out, they, a black man's life is, is worth less than a damn dog, man. Yes, sir. Yep. A black man's life is worth less than a sea turtle, man. Yes, sir. A black and Hispanic man's life is worth less than a, than a bald eagle, man. That's because guess what? They are uncivilized. They can they can uh, uh, relate more to the animal than they can uh, another human being. Exactly. They're uncivilized, man. Exactly. And if we turn back to this Bible, we will be the epitome of being civilized like we're supposed to be. Because guess what? Even in our hell and poverty, we still maintain some sense of being civil. You know, you know? Buckles John's brother wouldn't hug the murderer of his own brother. If that's not being civil, what is? Exactly. How can to, to hug the person? That murdered your own flesh and blood shows you how compassionate and civil we are. Yes, and imagine how much more we return to the Bible and do it the right way. Yes, and love and have that sympathy for our own people, yes, man. Yes, Tell them where you at. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 2. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. The Bible tells us to learn not the way of the heathen. Meaning, don't learn the way of the heathen. I know you got a question. Who are the heathen according to the Bible? Because you know, old church women love saying that word. Exactly. You're heathen. They see you with your drinking hand. You're um, you heathen. Yes, sir. You're a backslider. Yes, sir. Guess what? A heathen according to the scriptures, Christians, is anybody that's not on this side. Yes, sir. A heathen is anybody that is not a child of God. Yes, sir. A child of the Most High. You are children of the Most High. Yes, the 12 tribes of Israel. Yes, sir. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. If you're not black, Hispanic, or Native American, you are a heathen. Yes, sir. And the Bible tells us to learn not the way of these other races. Learn not the way of the Chinese. Learn not the way of the white man. Learn not the way of the Africans or the Arabs. And no, look, white people laugh when we say learn, learn not the way of the Africans. They think we Africans, man. Guess what? We are not Africans. We don't do this, man. That image right there, that white boy, you know what his name is, brother? That's not Christ. His, his name, that image right there is the image of, his name is Caesar Borgia. His father, was the, the, the Pope the second of Alexander, it's like it. the second Pope Alexander, was one, something like that. And what he did was the Pope commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to paint Christ in the image of his son, Caesar Borgia. And then white people ruling the earth at the time, they pushed that image forth. And now all over the world, when we think of Christ, we can think of this hippie looking white boy. Well, that's not Christ. According to the Bible, Christ is a black man. In Revelations 1 and 13, it says Christ is a black man. Not only is Christ a black man, Christ is a dark skinned black man with white hair, just like you, brother. Just like you. Say it in the Bible. But you know what? Christians don't read the Bible. So that's why you go in most of these churches and they got this shaggy looking dog right here hanging up in every church. You go into these Christian churches, they got Bibles with this picture right here. You know why? But that's the way of the heathen. And you know why? Because our Christian pastors have come together with our oppressor to oppress us. Our Christian pastors have sold us out, man. Our Christian pastors are being paid to lie to us, man. The Christian church is the number one big business in the black community. They've made over $300 billion in 30 years. Hear me out. The black Christian church made $300 billion in the past 30 years from black people. And they say we broke, we're not broke, we got the greatest spending power, but what, what are we spending our money on? The church, the church. And the church made all that money for black people and we don't have any rec centers. The church didn't build any rec centers. The church didn't build no project homes. As much money as we gave the church, there should be an Ebenezer First Missionary Greater Mount Calvary uh, project homes. There should be a Mount Olive Recreation Center. 
You know what I'm saying? You know why? Because we gave all our money to these people and they turn right back around and they keep their pockets full. They live delicious on the earth. Cruffalo, Cruffalo uh, what's his name? Cruffalo Dollar got a uh, $57 million jet. $57 million jet, man. You know what? And guess what he said? He just said recently, he said, if, if they find out his life on Mars, then I'm going to need a rocket ship because I got to spread the gospel to, uh, to Mars. Listen, he's using black people to live a delicious life. He don't give a damn about the souls of black people. You know why? Because if he did, he would tell the people the truth. He would tell the people that, guess what? If you are black, Hispanic, or Native American, you are children of the Lord, man. He would teach us who our enemy is according to the Bible. He would teach us that the white man is the devil according to the Bible. The word devil only means deceiver. The white man has deceived the whole earth into belief that this is Christ. He's the devil. He's a deceiver, man. But guess what? The pastors have made an agreement with our oppressor so they can live delicious. Tell them where you at. The book of First Maccabees. Chapter 1, verse 11. In those days, when they're out of Israel, wicked men. It says, and in those days, when they're out of Israel, wicked men. Now, we already know, if you're black, Hispanic, or Native American, you are Israel. You are Israelite. Don't let the white man tell you you're black, Hispanic, um, uh, you're Native American, uh, you're African American, you're a spit. You know what I'm saying? We've been every word according to the white man. We've been colored. We've been Negro. We've been Afro-American. We've been African-American. We're the only race of people that have been given different names as far as who we are. You know why? Because they don't want us to find out who we really are. The real Jews, according to the Bible. Israelites. Our homeland is Israel, man. And it says, in those days, out of our homeland, Israel, went out what? Wicked men. Went out wicked men, man. It's no different than today. There's so many of our black, so-called black leaders that are wicked men. You know why? Because they love money. And they all, they driven by money. So what the white man does, he pays our, our people that we look up to, to mislead the people, to lie to the people. The Bible's gonna tell you, it's right here, keep reading. Who persuaded many? Who persuaded many. These wicked men that came out of our nation, it's the same today. They persuaded many. You know how you know it's the same today? Who got the mega churches now? You go to Creflo Dollar Church. Creflo Dollar has 20,000 members. You go to Eddie, the, 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 the man late known as Eddie Long. He had, what, 10,000 members. T.D. Jake's church got about 30,000 members. These men, these wicked men, persuade many to go against God, to not follow what the Lord says, man. They persuade many. It was like that back then, and it's like that now. Keep reading. Say let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. These wicked men, this is what they said. They said, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. Once again, brother, who is the heathen? Anybody that's not on this side. Our so-called leaders, the black politicians, the entertainers, the Christian pastors, they have made a covenant with the white man to, to go against the people. That's why black people go to church for all their life and never are spiritually fed. Never are taught the truth of who they are. Our grandma must give all their money to the pastor and die living on a fixed income. You know what I'm saying? As black people, we give all our money to people who drive in benches and Mercedes and we catch the damn bus. We catch the damn bus, man. You know why? Because these people have made a covenant with the heathen. They have made an agreement with our oppressors to not tell us the truth. To just keep treating what we want to hear so they can get rich, and that's what they have done. That's why T.D. Jace got all that money, living, living real delicious, got all them nice Versace suits. They, listen, these Christian pastors live better than uh, Fortune 500 CEOs, man. Say I'm lying, look it up. And guess what, because they got that tax agreement, they don't have to report their income, so we don't even know how much they really making. These black Christian pastors are making more money than Fortune 500 CEOs, you know why? off the pockets of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And we keep falling for it and thinking they really love us, that they telling us the truth according to the Bible. Those pastors don't preach the Bible, man. They don't teach out this book. You know how you know? Because Christ told the man, if you want to follow me, you will sell all you got and come follow me. You know, let's get that. Drop that. Give me, give me Matthew 19 and 16. This is how you know those Christian pastors don't follow God. One, 
They don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. They'll tell you, say it again. Right, if they really gave a damn about black people, they will tell you not to love everybody. They will tell you that you have an enemy, black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Don't we know by now that, that there's a war being waged on our people? We can't tell by now. We can't tell by the police being on all our corners in our neighborhoods. We can't tell how they poison the water and the food. We can't tell how they put the Planned Parenthoods on our corners. We can't tell how they oppress our people, man. There's a war being waged on our people. And these Christian pastors, these black politicians, these entertainers aren't saying anything about it, man. You know the only time they say something? It's when it's to benefit them. It's when it's, they say just enough to get black people to follow them. And guess what? Us in our ignorance, we love to hear it. Like, oh yeah. We hear it and we love to hear it. You know why? Because we don't really want the truth, man. And we heard the truth, they wouldn't be in power. They wouldn't be allowed to keep lying to us as a people and taking all our money. Tell them where you at. Call them. You said Matthew 19. Matthew 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do? Now, now this, is, this is the history about his brother coming to Christ. This is when Christ was still on the earth. It was a brother that came to him, and he asked Christ, he said, Good master, what must I do? You know what I'm saying? Keep reading. That I may have eternal life. That I may have eternal life. The brother wants to know what can I do to follow you, to, to get the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because as black people, that's we always have been a spiritual people. We always look towards what's next. But we've been taught by the Christian church that what's next comes after death. Well, that's not what the Bible says. What's next is the next kingdom, the next rulership on earth. But anyway, the brother's asking, how do I get eternal life? Keep reading. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Christ is saying, Why are you calling me good? Keep reading. There is no good but one. That is God. Christ told him, Don't call, Why are you calling me good? There's only one good but God. That's another way you know the Christianity doctrine is trash. Because you know what they teach? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Whole time, that's not even in the Bible. Christ said, Why are you calling me good? I'm just a man like you. He said there's only one good. Who? Huh? That is God. That is God. Christ said there's only one good, and that is God. So why does the Christian church teach us that Christ is God? When Christ just said out his mouth, there's only one good, and that is God. That's a strike against the Christian church right there. Keep reading. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So this is Christ speaking once again. He told this man, the man asked him, he trying to figure out, what can I do to get eternal life? Christ told him, if you want eternal life, you will keep the commandments. Now hold up, hold up. Keep the laws of the Bible? I thought the Christian church said the laws were done away with. I thought the pastor said the commandments are done away with. I thought Crypto Dollar said, Satan wants you to follow the laws so you can get tripped up. That's what, that's the, that's what the pastors teach. That's what Christianity teach. But Christ just said, if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep my commandments, man. Do my commandments. Strike two against the Christian church, man. We prove it right here. The Christian church is lying to the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Keep reading. Call to a God, verse 18. He said unto him, which? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false, false witness. Verse 19. So Christ is running down to some of the commandments right here, right? The brother asked, what can I do? Christ said, keep the commandments. Christ is naming down a couple of them. He was saying, do this, do that, do this, do that. Keep reading. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Once again, he's he running through the commandments. Keep reading. Verse 20. The young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What like I yet? So this brother said, you know, imagine Christ telling you what you gotta do to get the kingdom. And you hear it, you good, y'all yeah, get a fire, get a fire. Christ telling the brother what all he gotta do to get the kingdom. And imagine he hear everything he's supposed to do, he's like, shoot, I'm doing that. He get happy. Like, I'm following all the laws. Since I was a young man, I've been following everything you said. And guess what? This is what Christ said. And Jesus said unto him, if that will be perfect, Christ said, if thou will be perfect, 
Once again, what the Christian church tell you? Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect but, but Christ. What did Christ just say that this man had to do? Go and sell. Still like it. Go and sell thou hands. Christ said, if you want to be perfect, meaning if you want to come be good enough to follow me, he said, go and sell all that you have. Now, why would Christ tell this brother, him being a rich man, to sell all that he has? Keep reading. And give to the poor. And give to who? The poor. He, Christ told this rich man, check this out, this man was doing everything right. And Christ said, well, no sweat. You got to do this right here. Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor. Give it to the black people that's laying on under the bridges in D.C. Give it to the, the drug addicts in Baltimore. Give it to the black woman that better can feed her kids, man. Give it to the brother that's in prison that's trying to find out how he gonna eat, man. Christ said, give it to the poor. What does the Christian church do with their money? When you go in that church and you pay the love offering, and you paying the building fund, and you paying the, the pastor and the first lady's uh, anniversary fund, and you paying 10%, and then you paying uh, another 5% for whatever reason. Where is all that money going? Where is it going? Going right to their pockets. Going right into the gas tank of that Mercedes Benz. Right to the, the, the gas tank of that Lamborghini truck, man. The Christian, that jet. That $57 million jet, man. That mansion. The, that money that we give these churches, if the pastors were really men of God, it would be right back to the people. You shouldn't be in church struggling to pay your rent while the pastor talking about you got a blessing and keep giving to the church. You should be able to get help. Thank you, sister. Get a flyer. Get a flyer, sister. You should be able to get help at that church. You know why? Because that's what Christ said. Christ said, if you do, if you want to follow, if you want to be good enough to follow me, just give all you have, sell it, and give it to the poor, man. The Christian, the Christian pastors don't do that, man. Haven't we proved by now the Christian church does not do what the Bible says? The Christian pastors don't believe what the Bible says. So lock it. Keep reading. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. Christ said, can we read it again? And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. He said, if you do all this, if you sell what you got, give it to the poor, you'll have treasure in heaven. You'll be good enough to follow me, Christ. Keep reading. And come and follow me. Verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. He went away what? Sorrowful. Sorrowful. When the young man heard Christ tell him to sell all you have and give it to the poor, he went away sorrowful. So what sorrow? Sadness. He went away sad. You know why he was sad? The Bible's going to tell us. Keep reading. For he had great possessions. For he had great possessions. Man, this is, check this out right here. This is the spirit of the Christian church. This man, the only thing he had to do was to sell everything he had Give to the poor and he will be good enough to follow Christ. And guess what? Instead of doing the right thing, he, he, he made up in his heart and his mind that I, I'm not giving away my riches. I'm not selling my riches. So guess what? In his wicked heart, he hung his head in sadness and he walked away. He said, well, listen, I'd rather live now, live good now, because guess what? My treasure is right here. My treasure is earthly things, man. My treasure is not the brotherhood. My treasure is not to care about my brothers and sisters, man. My treasure is not giving a damn about my people. Guess what? My treasure is gold, it's money, it's flashy things, it's suits and jets and cars and, and status, man. That's the Christian. Come with Christ. That was so heavy. Stay right here. And that was so heavy. Because the, put, the, what, the only thing he had to do here was obey Christ. That's all he had to do. Every test God gave a man in here, he wanted to see if you're even willing to do it. And he, this rich man was not willing to do it. He said, listen, you sell everything, you're going to have treasures in heaven. Christians walking around today, rich as could be in D.C. Rich as could be. They say they believe in God, they say they believe in heaven, but they don't do nothing for poor people. I see them at the lights despising people coming up with the cups, looking at them like, you're so nasty, you're so filthy. 
and talking about they ain't gonna give him no money because all he gonna do is buy drugs. Yeah. Well, listen, that nigga need to go get high. He's sleeping under a bridge. Right. He's sleeping in a damn box. Right. You in your air, your air conditioned car, riding your rich old bougie behind out to buoy, right. and you don't care nothing about black people. Right. You just like this rich man in the Bible. Right. And you don't even believe in that fake heaven right. that they that you um, learn about in the Christian church. Right. Because if you really knew what heaven was, the kingdom of heaven is within you yes, and Christ was saying if you would follow him you would get treasures in heaven you would get your nation back which is heaven that's heaven you know what heaven is southeast with no black on black crime heaven is Barry Farms back in black hands with no drugs heaven is no child molestation in the church or in the schools. Right. Heaven is having goddamn clean water coming through your tap. That's right. Ask DC, ask Flint, Michigan. Right. Yeah. That's heaven. Yeah. Heaven is not having to go see your father through a glass right. in the DC jail. Right. Heaven is not seeing your mother whore herself out for drugs and Molly's and Percocets. That's what heaven is. But these rich Negroes won't give up a dime so we could have one black man off of drugs, one black woman from aborting her babies. They won't give up a dime. What Christ was showing here is how much they love their money instead of loving black people. And you look at any black leader today, and that's who Christ's talking about. T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Louis Farrakhan. What was that one who just opened up the, um, the old gay um, studio down in Atlanta? Tyler Perry. They don't love black people, man. Right. They're trying to. He, even, even to open up a black studio, yeah, it shows you they know America is racist and we need our own. Right. So why are you pussyfooting? Right. Separate totally, man. Right. Separate totally and build something for your people. Right. Give up what's for you and give it up so that your people could live. That's, right. That's love. Right. You want equality with a white man. Yeah. The white man went to war and, and gave up his families. Right. The white man sacrificed all sorts of stuff. George Washington burnt down that, that Delaware bridge, ate his horses, ate the boots, so his children could have Yale and Harvard and Georgetown. Right. What are you willing to give up? Right. Right. What are you willing to give up? You want to be equal like him, right? You want the same power he got? Well, listen, I'm willing to burn, to, to light on fire every blood and never put it to my mouth. I'll never smoke again. I want Dutch masters to go broke. I want them, that old um, fam, white family up there in Pennsylvania, them Dutch masters, let them go broke. I ain't gonna never get high again. I ain't gonna never go to no strip club and toss no dollars. Let them strippers go broke and maybe the strip club could close and we could have black women back again being mothers and teachers and cooks so we ain't got to go to no damn Chinese restaurant and make them slanty-eyed bastards rich. That's heaven! That's treasures in heaven! But you rich Negroes, you don't wanna give up a, a brown cent to see that happen. You know what the problem in the black community is? It ain't the brother on the corner with his pants low. It's you rich Uncle Tom niggas that think you just dark-skinned white people that would not give up part of your check or part of your day or part of your life to help black people. I know it's too tough for you because you ain't from us. You Ethiopians, you ain't gonna understand this. You Africans, you ain't gonna understand this. This is black talk. This is Hispanic talk. This is native Indian talk. This is that nigger language. This is that, that Sioux and that Cherokee language. This is that Vato language. You ain't gonna understand this. The kingdom of heaven is within you, black man. Separate from America and gain it. Join America and die with her when Christ comes back. Trying to find something to follow Hand loyalty, every man tried to borrow Felt pain and a lot of sorrow Got betrayed so packed I didn't even have my heart broke Living confused, about to lose hope Cops got me on the side of the road Like a sideshow, need an antidote before I croak Now I'm setting fire to rhythm man blues Call this guitar smoke Rebel with no cause, trying to find direction The world got me vexed Picked up a bad lick of habit that's already turned from oppression Felt like my life was on fire trying to find an exit Now look, 10 G's plus a good wreck Sometimes I follow what 
is a soldier trying to find a good ship. Plus, when you in hell, how do you excel? Wisdom the breath of life, I don't believe in fairy tale. Listen well to what I tell. No call it can cause pain. Something that a rebel knows very well. Can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword. With